Well, I'm back with an update as I've been chronicling how to restore this Camaro and how to get the engine back running again. Uh, I was at the point where the engine was installed, it's been broken in, or broken in. Um, the cam was broken in, we did the 30 minutes of, of cam break in. Um, I've had it on the road now for 23 miles um, and uh, the engine was not running very well uh, once we got it out on the road. It, I got it to the point with uh, a number of new ignition components, uh, a lot of tuning, uh, and it was idling pretty well, it was running fairly well, uh, but it didn't have any power. As, as you tipped in, um, it just, uh, for, a, for an engine of this capability, it should have had a lot more power. So I've been working for, the, for this 23 miles and probably another hour or so of running to try to get, uh, to d do diagnostics. I've had the scan tool on it. Uh, fuel pressure gauge, uh, a number of things. And so I'm kind of back here with an update. Um, one of the things I also had was valve train noise. There was a fair amount of clatter. And uh, over time it seemed to be getting worse. Um, I was doing an investigation with uh, timing light and uh, was able to see that the cla valve train clatter was causing the timing to retard and that just didn't make any sense to me uh, um, at all. Um, also from a power perspective um, it, just, it just felt like the engine was holding back. Furthermore, as, uh, as I've gone in um, I have found some of the reasons for valve train clatter and we'll, uh, I'll walk through that here in just a moment. Uh, you probably notice as the camera is gone that the valve covers are off and there's some rope around here and and so let me get into that a little bit. While I was running these back pressure checks it just became evident that the valve train noise uh, was excessive. Uh, these cams, this is a comp cams, it's one of their high energy and they claim that it has a little more what they call sewing machine noise than a stock cam and I said well that's fine but as time went on it became evident that that wasn't um, just didn't seem correct. So I pulled the valve covers to do a further inspection. Um, and the reason for the rope is that in order to get the valve covers off you need to be able to get wiring harnesses and cables, injector harnesses, hoses, everything out of the way. Um, the driver's side isn't quite so bad. The passenger side is even worse. And it has a uh, even has the heater hose going through the middle of there. I get my light here. So I managed to get uh, things disconnected enough and when I got inside the valve cover you'll see right there uh, that one of the rocker arms is clean off of uh, no longer on the valve stem but is down alongside the valve or down alongside the retainer and it is stuck there. It will not, um, it, it won't move. Uh, so it's a little bit hard for me to show you while I'm on video. I, I may try to do his edit and put in it, insert it, but um, what I did was you can see right down here that there are, are a couple of ports that go down into the valley from inside the cylinder, in the, through the cylinder head down into the valley. The, uh, the conclusion was when I got in there I could see that this valve was stuck and, it, and the push rod is even out of position in the lifter. It's still in the lifter but just barely. It's hanging on the edge. Again I've got some pictures. Um, I have a little borescope inspection camera that I ran down through that hole and was able to see what was going on. While I was in there looking at that and trying to understand I saw some green droplets and green is rather scary. Uh, if you, um, you know, that's coolant and it's, you know, where, where could coolant be coming from? So, again using the borescope camera I went up and went through the valley and was looking from the underside um, down both sides 
um, of the cylinder head and the intake manifold by going through and looking up at the opposite bank. When I did that, I could see on the, that on the right-hand bank near the number one cylinder, and that would be that would be over here. In that, essentially, right down through this opening, um, right down through that opening, right about there, um, with the borescope looking upward, I could see water droplets on the inside of the valley, on the wall, between the cylinders, between the push rods, essentially. Um, and it actually looked like there might be a crack there. So, I have brought out, again, I brought out my uh, radiator pressure tool. Um, I had to reinstall a couple of hoses that I had removed for the, for the sake of uh, testing. And I pressurized this up to 15 PSI, and at 15 PSI, you could see that inside the valley, underneath the, underneath the head here, in the block, uh, I could see that there was, were coolant droplets bleeding out uh, and rolling down into the valley. So after that, I started, you can see also that I have a dial indicator out here. Um, I have been using the dial indicator uh, set onto the exhaust manifold. It's a little precarious. It's hard uh, with the engine in the car to get a good surface. But um, I've been working here to take and measure uh, clearances. If you look, just take a look here, you can see that the rocker arm is loose. That rocker arm is loose. There are several that are loose. I have the uh, engine cranked up right now to top dead center for number one, and the valve clearances are, mm, goodness, 30 thousandths, 40 thousandths, on the ones that should be, um, that you could adjust from this point. In other words, some, it depends on where the cylinder is in the firing order, but you can open up check the clearance and I have clearances from 30 thousandths to 150 or so which tells me uh, that that near as I can tell that the cam is probably worn probably severely which is why I'm getting so much valve train noise to the point where you could see on the other side that I have a rocker arm out of position um, My expectation is that the coolant in the oil, uh, you know, coolant in the oil, glycol in the oil, uh, is, is very destructive to the oil and ruins its lubricating properties. And it's probable that the cam actually didn't survive the break-in because there was enough coolant in the oil already that it, uh, um, that it didn't break in properly. I have also... Down here, I have also cut apart, I've drained the oil, cut apart the filter, and you can see that that oil is really black. This was a white bowl, and you can see the see the color on there, and there's um, <laughs> you can see as I tip this, there's a lot of sludge sludge in the bottom. So, at this point, that makes sense. There, with coolant in the oil, you would expect to see bad things. Some of that debris is just from the engine break-in. I was planning to change the oil anyway very shortly, even though I've only got 20 miles. I wanted to flush it out. Um, didn't get quite that far before I decided uh, we're, we have a problem. So, at this point... It appears the block has a crack. You can see the coolant coming out. Um, I'll try to show that um, in, in this history, um, show the clip or at least a photograph of, of the, the uh, effect of that. But the answer is now, after all these months of pulling the engine, getting it cleaned up, 
getting all the parts together, making it run. It was really exciting and successful. But I have a cracked block. And I've talked to the engine shop and based and showed them the pictures in the video and their opinion is that it probably cracked sometime in storage. Uh, I, even though there was antifreeze in this block for all of those years, uh, perhaps it wasn't strong enough or Michigan winters are strong enough that um, somehow that cracked. So right now, um, right now the uh, project will be to start disassembling everything again. I've talked to the engine shop and they've agreed to um, uh, we're going to come up with another block and they'll machine it and we'll take all the parts that are good out of here and transfer them to a new block and put it all back together and I'm going to pull the engine, get it redone, bring it back a second time. Rather amazing never would have expected it's very disappointing uh, but those are the things we learn are challenges as you try to resurrect a car that's been parked for so many years so here are the pictures and uh, video that I took with my scope you can see the push rod out of position here on the lifter for it push rods bent here you start seeing some pictures where I could see the green, you know, pale green uh, coolant laying down in the valley um, over on the other bank, um, the 135, and I could see coolant on the cylinder wall here. So I started going with the video. You'll see, well, here's the uh, push rod a little bit. But then I was trying to scan, looking upward at the bottom of the intake manifold and the cylinder head. And you can get a look at the cylinder head gasket uh, interface. And I was, I was scanning around with the, with the uh, scope, just looking for places where I might have a leak. Uh, like I say, assuming that I had a head gasket leak or an intake manifold gasket leak, or, um, you know, just couldn't... Um, couldn't understand how I would get coolant down there. You can see some more uh, showing up on the on the video. But but I couldn't find a source. Uh, but kept trying, kept going, and really focused in on this area. And then you know again I could see I could see it on the cylinder wall, but. But it just didn't make sense. You can see all the gasket surfaces up top look look dry and uh, and are fine. So at that point, that's why uh, you know earlier in the video I showed the putting on my pressure checker. So then I pressurized the cooling system uh, with the idea that I'd get pressure on the on the gaskets and see where it was leaking. And I did notice this scratch what looked like a scratch on the wall that little white line uh, right up to the top uh, but it didn't seem like anything serious uh, until uh, this next uh, video so if you look here and you watch up to the up to the top of the screen you'll see first of all that the green droplets are rolling downward in the picture they're they're active and if you look at that white line, you'll see little droplets that turn into bigger droplets. And when they get big enough, they start rolling down the side. It's not coming from the gaskets. It's coming right out of that little white line. It was very uh, astonishing and disappointing to see that, but it's uh, very obvious um, the coolant's coming right on through that cylinder wall, through through a hairline crack. So at this point, uh, it's back to the engine shop. I'll start pulling it out and uh, start hunting for a block. 